Anyone in opposition to the bill? I'll start here in Carson City. No one in Carson City, down in Las Vegas. Uh, please come forward if there are quite a few people. You can sit, get cozy three at a time. And I am going to set a five minute time limit just because we do have to be on the floor at 11. We have two more bills to process. And if there's anything that's repetitive, you can just say me too. But thank you very much. Please state your name and begin your testimony. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Jonathan Friedrich, members of the Commission. The last name is spelled F R I E D R I C H. A um, couple of items. Well, more than a couple. Senate Bill 254 goes way beyond mediation. That has been the main subject of the discussion by the presenter uh, to this point. This bill is a full employment act for mediators and arbitrators. I did have Felicia down here uh, send up to you a proposed amendment to Senate Bill 254. Hopefully you all have it. Uh, it also has a lot of exhibits attached to it. I believe it's 21 pages. And um, Excuse me, Mr. Friedrich. One member of yes. the subcommittee is an attorney, so he might not be too opposed to a full employment act for mediators and arbitrators. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, I happen to be an arbitrator with the American Arbitration Association, and in my career with them, which has lasted many, many years, uh, I did have one mediation case. Anyhow, continuing on, uh, I take exception to a lot of what has been testified to. Current, under the current statute, the funds are only available for the non-binding arbitration. Now, as we all know, it takes the Common Interest Community Commission a very long time to get a re um, regulation through the process. There are, uh, has to be written. There are public hearings. It then has to go up to the LCB for review. Six months to a year can transpire before a regulation actually is adopted. This should be taken uh, into consideration. This bill has a tremendous number of holes in it. It's punitive. It's hurtful. It's harmful, not only to the homeowner, but to the economy of our state. Who would want to move into a community in this state where if they have the, the simple act of complaining about a out-of-control board, wind up losing their home. There's a section in here that deals with the charges. And if you look through it very carefully on page 16, um, section 15 lines, I believe it's 28 to 31, if someone does not pay the arbitrator's fees, if it goes to arbitration, then it becomes a common expense, which becomes a lien on the property, which now can be foreclosed. And this is very cleverly disguised. Pardon me, Mr. Uh, Friedrich, could you, you think, could you ref give us that citation sure. again in the bill? That's section 15. It was se what subsection is it? Pay, uh, subsection, of, uh, it's section 15, page 16, lines 28 to 31. Section 16. Okay, it's also slightly above it where it talks about charges. Uh, charges starts on line 21. This is a very, very draconian portion that's concealed, hidden in the bill. And I have been a victim of arbitration costs and expenses. And arbitration is not cheap. My bill alone was over $50,000 over the fact that a budget ratification meeting was never held. And the cost of a court action was a lot cheaper. So I would disagree with former testimony. Excuse me, Mr. Friedrich. Now, I'm looking at section 16, subsection 2, where it defines charges. Charges means any charge which an association may impose against an owner of residential property pursuant to the governing documents goes down to defined and any penalties, fines, fees, and other charges. You said that you I'm believe someone's home can be foreclosed upon for this. Can you, I'm not sure I, I'm seeing that. I'm yeah, chapter 26, line 26, assessments. If an assessment is not paid, then it becomes a lien under common uh, expenses.
Now, I, I understood assessment to mean your, your, your monthly dues. Am I, am I misunderstanding? It goes something? beyond that. It goes beyond that. It also says penalties and fines, late charges, interest, and cost of collecting the charges, which is on line 27. Well, I'm, I think I'm going to have to, at some point, maybe after this hearing, I'll consult with the legal division to see if they agree with your interpretation. If that's true, that's not something I could support. Someone might lose their house to foreclosure because of being behind on these charges. But I'm, I'm not 100% certain that that's how legal interprets that. That's that part of the statute. I'm not, a deter I'm not an attorney, but that's my layman's interpretation. Okay, well, I will check with legal after this hearing, because if you're correct, that's not something that I could support. But thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, now, I did propose a uh, alternative, an amendment to this bill, and very simply, it would use the current intervention affidavit form number 530. All parties would have to go to a conference with the ombudsman, and this would be mandatory, to try to resolve it on a very low level. If that failed, uh, and there'd be no charge for the service. If there's no resolution to the dispute with the ombudsman, then it's to be uh, referred to the um, Clark County Neighborhood Justice Center, as you've already heard, or in Reno, there is the Neighborhood Mediation Center for a further attempt to resolve the dispute. And again, there is no charge. If the resolution is a resolution is reached, it would be reduced to a written record signed by the parties, and a failure to adhere to the agreement would then be a subject uh, to referral to the district court for adjudication. Now, the cost of this, I'm proposing that an increase of $3 per door per year be assessed against all the homeowners in the state to pay to the real estate which would then forward that additional money to these two organizations which are administered by the court system. Uh, in the event that the dispute is not resolved at this level with these neighborhood justice centers and there's one in Reno, uh, then either party shall be able to uh, file a non-binding arbitration in accordance with section 31, subsection 5, 4, 5, and 6, that is currently in Assembly Bill 448, the first reprint. Uh, if either party to the dispute shall have the option to file the action dealing with either the governing documents of a common interest community or of Chapter 116 of NRS, to go to mediation, arbitration, or a court of competent jurisdiction without complying with the provisions of NRS 38.300 to 306. Furthermore, I would ask, as per uh, Senator Schneider has requested, that the office of the Ombudsman be moved to the State Attorney General's office with a yearly increase of total of $8 per year per house uh, paid to the Attorney General to offset this cost. These are suggestions to an amendment uh, which I have already had faxed up to you and hopefully you have it. A couple of other items very quickly because there are a lot of other people here that are against this bill. Um, right now the way the bill is written there is no uh, cost funding in this bill. It says if funds are available. Now we've heard testimony that there is a hundred thousand dollars but right now that money has not been allocated to this program. So there's a lot of problems with this bill as currently written and if this bill goes through you're going to see a lot of very a uh, lot of harmed homeowners who for the sake of complaining about a out-of-control board losing their homes and I'll turn it over to the next person who'd like to speak. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Friedrich? I don't see any. Thank you, Mr. Friedrich. Uh, with the next witness, state your name.